We are joined by another hujaj from Durban in South Africa, brother Anwar Isub. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum as wa rahmatullahi Your Hajj experience so far? Alhamdulillah, very exciting. Um, it is my second, third experience with Saudi. And every time we come here, we see major, major improvements, which is good. Alhamdulillah, well done to the Saudis. <laughs> and uh, your first Hajj, no? No, this is my second Hajj. Mashallah, your second Hajj. And this experience different from the first one? Big difference. <laughs> Particularly, um, anything particular? The improvements, the infrastructure, the facilities. They've improved like over a hundred folds. So that's why I say well done to the Saudis. <laughs> On your trip, you met uh, a former pastor who embraced Islam just three weeks ago. He's made international headlines and uh, you uh, uh, had the opportunity of meeting him over the last few days, also on invitation from the custodian of the two holy mosques. Uh, what's your response to that? No, it's, uh, I met uh, Sheikh Ibrahim on the 7th of April in his church when I went to his church. And Allah used me to give the shahada in the church. Allah Akbar, mashallah. Yeah, so ever since he's become my friend, not on, the, on his Hajj trip. It's from the 7th of April we became friends. <laughs> And uh, talk us through how we embrace Islam. I do the month of Ramadan, the last 10 days of Ramadan, and uh, I was in uh, Amlazi. Amlazi is a black township, like the Soweto of Johannesburg. Amlazi is the black township of Durban. Where Indians, because of apartheid, we, we don't really go to this place, we don't venture. But uh, Alhamdulillah, Allah Park used me and I was in the area. And uh, I met a youngster by the name of Nuruddin. Uh, and he told me, you know what, there is a church up here, they dress like Muslims. And every time I see, you know, our Muslim brothers, I say, let's go see what they're doing. They be afraid in their own home. Would you like to come? I said, yeah, let's go, you know. And uh, when I went there, it's the Easter weekend, so it was busy. No parking. So eventually I found a parking and began walking through these people. like. You know? And as we were walking, they were making salam, salam, salam. Allah. And I said, no, it was, it was a nice, warm reception. Yeah. And when I got to the doorway, uh, the church hadn't started its sermon. It was full to capacity. And they got small windows and some fans. So it was boiling hot on the inside. They took us through, gave us some seating with the bishops and archbishops. They all embraced us, shook in. And the spokesperson for the church, I forget his uh, Zulu name, but his Muslim name is Juma. So Juma, you know, he says, you know, what's your reason for being here? I said, well, I see the moon and the star, you know, on your building, you know. I thought it's a mosque, you know. So, so he said, you know, we, we are not Muslims. But I said, okay, who you pray to? Then he tells me that uh, they pray to God. So I said, oh, alhamdulillah. I said, we too pray to God. Who's your God? And that is when he got stumped. He said, I can't explain to you who the God is. Maybe our leader should explain. I said, okay, where's the leader? I said, the leader is busy in the back room. Come back two hours later. So I began departing. And uh, to get from the door, about 10, 10 meters from him to the door, it took us like 20 minutes. Because everybody was hugging you and shaking hands like they knew you, you know. When I got to the door, I just turned around and I saw that it was like Pastor Abraham that time. I didn't know who he was. I saw this, you know, like a senior person lighting some candles. And he turned on and he saw me. And he just gave me a broad smile and began walking towards me, you know. Allah. And he opened his arms. So I'm standing, I don't know who, I don't know what's going to happen. So I just stood like frozen. And then I took a few steps towards him because people made way. So I realized this is an important person because it's so crowded and you're making way. And he came and he hugged me and he gave me this bear hug, you know. He's a big size guy. And he said in my ears, I've been waiting for you. When those words were said to me, I'm waiting for you, then my legs went into jelly. So I grabbed him tighter because I didn't want to drop. <laughs> and I just wondered what next. So I said, uh, where can we speak? He said to me, no, wait, wait. So I said, we can't, you couldn't speak inside the church. It was noisy. It was packed. So I said, let's go outside. We go outside. He says to me, I had a dream two weeks ago that you are coming. Allah. And now, that now, I can't explain the emotions and the feelings because it was like, wow, you know, suddenly you're just getting, like you're being thrown in the deep end and you can't swim. 
So I said, when can I come back? He says to me, wait, wait. I said, no, you are busy. Give me a time. He said, me two hours time. So I left because I just wanted to go away. I just wanted to be on my own or I don't know what I wanted to do, but I was confused. I was happy. I was excited. Uh, the, the emotions were very really mixed emotions. We went back to the masjid in East section. You know, it's a small masjid where we started the Tarawi up there, you know. And I had a meeting with my colleagues up there. And we said, two hours later, so we said, take another guy with you. So three of us went this time. When we went there again, when we entered the church, a packed church, hey, people stood up, made way for you. The respect. I, I never got respect like this before. And they made space for us, give us a seat right next to him, you know. Right. And uh, and eventually he began speaking to his people, telling them my father was a Muslim. We are following the Muslim way all wrong. They have come now to show us the right way. Allah. So for an hour he spoke to them about Islam. So we didn't give any dawah towards Islam. We gave shahada. Allah. And uh, the first shahada was given to approximately say five, six hundred people. And uh, we left thereafter, we went back and he said, come back. I said, when? He said, in the evening. I said, no, we got tarawih. He said, whatever time you finish, come back. So around 9.30 we come back. This time it is packed to capacity. When I say packed to capacity, I mean the outside, the inside. It's boiling hot on the inside. You are sweating as you sit. And it's winter. <laughs> And eventually, uh, this time, he addressed his people again, and uh, I gave the shahada, where he repeated after me to his crowd. So it is as though he gave the shahada, which was nice. And uh, we spent some time there. The people didn't want to leave us. The old people, soft people, nice people, and uh, all this lot has happened since then. Yeah. To date, a lot has happened. And uh, he's now on this head journey as well. We know that he spoke extensively about this dreamy head uh, and uh, <coughs> led him to embrace Islam. Uh, what's going through your uh, mind right now as you prepare for Wukuf on this very important day of Arafah? Uh, to be honest with you, Shaykh, uh, um, I'm still in the, in, in the dream mode and I'm still at uh, this Hajj thing here. Yeah, it was to me when they told me, you know, get ready, you're going for Hajj. I, I just took it as a joke. Somebody's messing around because I've already done my Hajj, I've done my Umrah, and the quota system does not allow us to go for, like for second rounds. I got my Imam in my masjid, Mulan Zefa, he's waiting for six years. So when they said that, I mean, like, even while we're here to it, he doesn't believe he's here to it. I don't believe I'm here. You know, it, it, I, I don't know if you're in a, in, in, like in a cocoon, you know. You're pinching yourself, is it real? But Alhamdulillah, whatever is happening, so I'm excited. I mean, to be invited to the house of Allah without even putting an application. You're not a court assistant. It's an invitation from the Almighty. This is a direct invitation, and I say, Alhamdulillah, shukar. I'm excited. I say, I got paid in this dunya, and, I, and inshallah, I'll get paid in the Akhira too. <laughs> may Allah accept your hajj, brother uh, Sheikh Esop, and uh, remember us in your duas, and may Allah grant you hajj makbul, and may Allah reward you for all the good work that you are doing as well. That's uh, our brother from Durban in South Africa.